If you've ever wanted to create a cool web page that shows measurements from your microcontroller, yet give the user from the web page controller back to the microcontroller, I'll show you how. I've seen plenty of YouTube demonstrations that show how to turn a light on or off with a button on your web page, and I've seen just a few demonstrations that show how you can use something like Ajax to get data from your website back to your microcontroller and from your microcontroller and update just portions of your web page. I'm going to do everything all in this one handy dandy demonstration. Things we're going to be learning how to do is, you know, obviously measure things with your microcontroller and post things like analog uh, read measurements in terms of bits or volts to your web page, how to turn light bulbs on or off, as you can see, like the LED on the microcontroller, and how you can put a slider control right on your website to turn a fan on or off or vary the PWM right from the website. So we're actually doing everything here. Now I know how to do, um, or I know that there's four ways you can update uh, data uh, on a website. Number one is what you'll typically see, and that's update the entire page, which is slow and ugly. Uh, I'm using XML updates here. Another type is um, JSON strings, and the last one is WebSockets, which is the fastest, but I'm not sure there's a library support out there. Let's walk through the code and I'll show you how everything works. All right, folks, the microcontrol that I'm using here is an ESP32. It is by far the easiest one to use for web programming and getting web updates. The example code is in two parts. The actual code that runs on the ESP32, and the second part is actually the web page code itself that's uh, for updating your web page, building the web page, and handling all of the um, uh, updates and whatnot. Compile options I'm using, uh, pretty standard stuff here. I'm using the ESP32 dev module for the uh, compiler options. In fact, I'll just bring tools down so you can kind of maybe take a screenshot and see some of the options that I'm using here. Things like flash frequency, PS RAM, and a few other things that you might uh, take note of. Also notice on some uh, ESP32s that I have found that they fail to program. I've had to press the little baby boot button on the ESP32 to get, a, get it to actually work. I'm not really sure why uh, you have to do that, but during the uh, the IDE upload process, that's where you have to push the boot uh, button. I am using standard Wi-Fi uh, libraries, Wi-Fi.h and wi uh, webserver.h, and uh, the supermon.h is simply the um, code for my .h file. It's actually just a big giant char file, and I'll go through that in just a few minutes here. I have a couple of uh, ways of creating my web page. One is connecting to my local home intranet, and that gives me the ease of debugging right from within my, uh, my desktop here. I can fire my uh, web page up and look at one screen and see the code on the other screen. I don't have to connect to the, uh, the Wi-Fi server or anything like that. That's really for debugging purposes only. Of course, put your local SSID in there and your local password, whatever they happen to be. Then when you're ready to go live, then uh, just use this define and comment out this define, and that's going to force the code to use uh, the uh, access or the uh, create the uh, an access point. Uh, I just call this uh, test website, and there's the uh, the wonderful password that uh, that I have just there. Now you can obviously make this whatever you want. Uh, so when you connect with your your phone or your smart TV or whatever, you're going to look for test website, and there's your password. Then this code will tell you exactly what that um, IP address is to launch the website. Typical pin defines for um, variables on measuring stuff and turning fans on and all that kind of good stuff there. Uh, variables down for you know, fan speed and the state of the LED and some output and a few other things. Uh, my um, XML that I'm building and sending live to my web page, I've got a char of 2048 characters. This is way too big for what I need, but the point is you're going to have to make this thing big enough to contain all of your data. I think my char is probably around 80 or 100 characters or so. Uh, so I just, I got too lazy. I just didn't feel like adjusting that, but you get the point on making sure the um, the XML data that you're sending, the char um uh, number of bytes is going to be big enough. I've also got some charges to you know contain some data for char operations, and you'll see that in just a few minutes. Typical web uh, connection type uh, protocol here. Uh, there's an actual IP that's going to be returned whenever we create our um, a connect to our local intranet. 
If you're going to build your own access point, which is sort of like your production version, you can specify what your page IP is going to be. Uh, you can make this 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 or 11.11.11.11, .11 whatever you want it to make. I just happen to use good old-fashioned 192.168.1.1. It's your choice what you do. Uh, a few other things, obviously, uh, uh, create your web um, or your server object, and uh, that's really about it. Uh, typical things in setup, set your pin modes up. Now, this is an example code here. I'm just uh, measuring a couple of analog pins and uh, turning a fan on and off through a uh, PWM pin and a few other basic things. Uh, you're probably going to have a whole bunch more things in here, maybe measure temperatures around your house or around your uh, you know, your operation or whatever you're trying to monitor, maybe have some pin modes for turning valves on and valves off or, or who knows what. This is just an example here. Uh, to configure your uh, PWM for the um, ESP32, it isn't easy. Uh, like in uh, like the teens, you've got to set up a, uh, a channel. My channel is zero. I've got it at uh, 10,000 hertz right now for my PDM, PWM cycle. Uh, I forget what the 8 is. Um, maybe that's the pin number. No, that's the pin number down there. doesn't really matter. Then we're going to attach the pin, uh, the pin number, whatever that was up in my define, to channel 0. And then I can write channel 0 in the fan speed, which I had set to 0 originally. So the fan's going to start in the off position. I don't know about you guys, but debugging web pages here is a nightmare, uh, especially with the ESP32s. Uh, if the web page doesn't return control quick enough, guess what happens? Your um, watchdog timer will take over and restart uh, your ESP32. You have no idea why. I disable all of this stuff. Um, I've got... Um, actually, I don't know why that's... Uh, that should be disabled here. I don't know why I have that enabled. Uh, you may have to disable your core one as well. I think I actually run it with that one on. I don't remember. Uh, you might have to play around with these things here if your web page keeps, sorry, if your ESP32 keeps restarting itself. <clears throat> Good old fashioned, let me, th the thing is uh, fired up. And here is the infamous, if I'm using my intranet, it is going to connect to my local internet and give me the IP address that this is connected to. I have to literally write that down so I know where to go to on my browser. Uh, once you're in production mode, uh, um, turn off that uh, use internet and it's actually going to create an access point here. Here is where you can use your smartphone or your smart TV or whatever to connect to your ESP32. And uh, I don't really need to print the address because I told it what the address is going to be way up in here. Uh, but it's just nice to have that printed out. And a few other things, uh, print Wi-Fi status just to see what's going on. The magic of this library is this right here, this on method. Uh, whenever the uh, server gets this character right here, it's going to fire off whatever code is in that function. Whenever the server gets this string right here, the forward slash XML, it is going to go execute that function. Same thing when I get an update slider uh, call back from my web page, it's going to update uh, or it's going to run through this code here, whatever that function is. So the beauty here is in some examples that you're, you'll see, uh, they're actually um, connecting to the, um, the client, reading an incoming data and processing it byte by byte. You know, if it's byte by byte, if it's this, then you have to put some if code and if else code in there. It's kind of a pain to do. This takes care of all of that for you automatically. So if you have 10 buttons on your web page and you want to um, process the, um, the um, action of each of those 10 buttons, just add another on statement for button 2, 3, 4, 5, or slider 1, or whatever control that you have on your website. It makes coding very, very easy. Then finally, in the uh, setup is start your server with the begin statement. Loop is real simple. I am polling my sensors every 50 milliseconds. I'm going to read uh, analog read pin A0, pin A1, convert that to volts. So I have the bits and the volts, and that is it. Real important is you've got to call the handle client periodically. Otherwise, your web page won't know what to do. All the rest of this is um, the processing code for when your ESP gets a callback from your web page. What is it supposed to do? I have a slider on the web page that you can dance it back and forth to change the PWM. 
Now I've got to intercept that uh, da- da- uh, that data coming back and do something with it. Uh, the data coming back, unfortunately, is a string. You don't have control over that. It is what it is. Just just deal with it. I hate strings for a multitude of reasons. Uh, you're going to get a uh, an argument called value because I named it value. It could be cat, dog, Larry, Steve, whatever. I call mine value. You're going to get an argument uh, called value. Read the um, the string and convert the string to an int. This is the one thing that's very, very weird about web programming is you don't pass numbers around, you pass strings around that just happen to be a number, then you got to convert it. Very expensive process to do, but it is what it is. Now I have the PWM value for my speed, and I'm just going to simply set that um, PWM to my channel zero, which is for my fan. I've got a little um, uh, NP and transistor set up, so I just uh, vary the, uh, uh, the, the, the base, and it will um, control the amount of current going to my fan. Real, real simple type of a thing. After you have done that, you have to send something back to your web page. If you go into one of these functions here, you have to send something back. Otherwise, your web page will stop working. There's two options that you have. You can send nothing back, which maybe you don't want to send anything back. Uh, Maybe you don't have any uh, warnings to send, or you're not doing any calculations, or you just don't want anything to go. But you still have to send something back, even if it's a, um, a null character. Uh, you have to send that back. This option here, I'm actually going to send back the RPM of the fan. Uh, Now, this is really goofy here. I know, don't laugh, but I'm just mapping 0 to 255 to uh, 0 to 2400 RPM on the fan. No way is it right, but it's just real down and dirty, real simple. The point here is that you get your fan RPM. I am going to copy that into a buffer and uh, send that buffer back to my website. That way I have instantaneous feedback whenever I dance my cursor around on my slider on what the actual um, uh, RPM is. There, there's better ways to do it, you know, measure the RPM and send that back. But a good example of where you would use this is you flip a button on that uh, activates a valve. Did it actually work or not? Measure that and send that back to the website on process failed or process succeeded. Uh, other code down here, here's how you can process your, I don't know what happened there, um, your uh, button press zero, and here I'm just turning the LED on the uh, ESP32 on or off, uh, letting me know that we're at least in this function here for more debugging purposes, and uh, we are just going to um, simply, I think it's right down in, right here, <laughs> right above me, uh, we're going to turn the LED on through digital uh, right. Again, you have to send something back in these functions, otherwise your web page will stop reading XML code. Here, I'm going to go the other way. I'm not going to send any information back whether the process succeeded or not. I'm just going to send back some good old-fashioned nothing, but at least the web page will keep active. Option two, like I said earlier, that if you want to say if the state worked or not, you can send back a one or a zero, or it worked or it didn't work type thing. All right, button uh, one, I've got two buttons on my page. Um, same thing. I'm not going to go through all of this uh, this code here. Send website. Uh, you remember up in the on statement uh, that whenever um, a, a client connects to the server here on this character right, where did it go? Right here, whenever it gets the forward slash and nothing else, it's going to uh, send website. So that... Um, that will uh, automatically uh, send this page main. Now, this page main is actually the char in uh, the char uh, in my uh, supermon.h, which we'll cover in just a minute. Something you might have to play around with is 200 milliseconds. I've noticed on a couple of the web pages I had, they're very, very large, like 4,000 characters. Uh, actually, way more than that. Um, the XML is about uh, 2,000 characters. They're, they're huge. Uh, that's got to get a little bit higher, maybe even 800 milliseconds to keep the uh, web page from crashing the ESP. Remember, if you don't get a callback within a certain amount of time frame, ESP thinks everything is locked up, it's going to reboot itself, and that's a pain to debug. Keep that in mind that you have to tickle that number right there. Send XML. Again, if you haven't heard me uh, before, I hate strings, and I use every uh, char as much as I can. First, take our uh, buffer. Our, 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 sorry, our XML uh, char array and a dump typical XML header into it and then build all of your um, uh, header information. 
So what I could do, uh, maybe I can run this thing and let you see what the XML actually looks like. And just to give you an idea that it, this is not real complicated stuff here. Let's just go ahead and compile this thing as we're sitting here and uh, doing our uh, update here. And you can see exactly what the XML looks like. <clears throat> All right, we got the XML code working. I uh, said to recompile it. I had a bad cable here, uh, so there you go. So there's the XML uh, code, uh, real dead simple. Uh, begins with four uh, data and end data, and uh, there's my bit zero, uh, volt zero, bit one, volts one, LED. It's in the off state right now, and uh, the switch is, is in the off state. So if I just hit in the, the auto scroll and turn my LED on, and I pause this thing, you'll see that the LED is now in the one state. So you can see how the XML code is uh, updating. Now, I've actually got the web page on a separate monitor here, just like such, so I can tickle some of the options, and you can see exactly how the XML code is, uh, is updating. All right, let's take a look at the actual um, web page itself, and uh, hopefully this will be not too, not too scary for you guys to look at here. And let's just change this to 32. And hopefully I won't get this garbled text on here. All right. All right, um, if you have never written uh, HTML code uh, with CSS styling and JavaScript, um, it's uh, it's uh, pretty daunting. Um, I've spent months trying to pick this stuff up, and I found it's uh, uh, pretty strange. Uh, one trick I have found that there's a, a link on here, the W3 schools, that when you get your web page written to where you you think you like it, uh, copy the whole code into that website, and uh, you can actually play it right from the website and see what it actually looks like and help you debug your your web pages and whatnot. It will not debug your JavaScript. That's the good old fashioned way. You gotta write it, compile it, upload it, refresh it, figure out why it doesn't work and repeat. That's a real pain to do. Uh, there's um, a couple of ways that you can update uh, web pages through these this XML update. Um, you can either find something by its ID, like a, like a text uh, piece of text, for example, in a, a div, um, uh, tag. You can either find it by its ID, and that's the first example right here, or you can find it by its class. So I use, in this example here, I use a class to designate the style, make it, uh, you know, bold font, green text, um, rounded corners, all that jazz, but I use an ID for the actual data itself. So all my XML code has to do is get the imp imp uh, incoming XML, um, figure out, uh, or I have to tell it which, which to update, and just simply updates that ID, get element by ID the switch, and update the uh, inner HTML with switches on or switches off or whatever. You can do everything through classes. Uh, your class can still define the, uh, the color and the font and the, the, the point size and all that jazz, and the class can also be used to update the data. Same thing as before. I've got a class defining my... Um, the text that's going to go in here and there's nothing in there. Uh, I get the uh, the text out of my XML code and I get element by class name switch and there's got to be a zero in here because you can have more than one class name. Uh, IDs can't. If you have um, uh, two IDs called switch, it's going to update just one and that's all you get. Uh, where a class can have this switch in here many, many times. Um, why they do that, I don't. I don't know, but they they just have it uh, have it that way. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Uh, if you do it the class way, you have to have a class for every piece of data that you want to update. Here, I have got one class for the style and an ID for each of my piece of data update. Typical web page thing: you've got an HTML tag, and I've got a style section where all my CSS style stuff is. I've got a body section with a header, a main, and a footer. And I've got a JavaScript section down here, uh, which that's the hard part to debug. And of course, ending with the uh, forward slash HTML um, word. Uh, as you uh, probably heard me say three, four times now, I hate strings. So uh, char is it for me. There's a real easy way to write code naturally. A constant char page 
main, um, your little array designator, prog mem, and the equals, and then put the R, this little character here, and these little um, whatever you want to put in there, some kind of a keyword. Could be X's, could be Z's, could be whatever. Uh, doesn't matter. And then, of course, your uh, open parentheses. At the very bottom of your uh, char definition, you have to have the reverse of that. Um, parentheses, those same exact keywords followed by the quote, and then your end, uh, your semicolon. That allows you to write all of your code uh, very naturally. Um, you don't have to put a bunch of uh, string plus this, plus that, plus this string, all that jazz. Just write it like you normally would. Here's where you can take all this code and take it and dump it right into this website that I pointed to up here, wherever that is. And then you can actually test your web page uh, just by typing stuff in. Typical style stuff, I've got a style for the table, the border, um, headers, uh, data tables, all that jazz. I've got all this stuff so I can control the width, the height, the uh, outline, all that stuff, body text, and you name it. I've got a style for all of the major parts of my web page. And if I show you what the web page looks like uh, real quick, you can see how I've got, um, in fact, my, let me just put it side by side so you can actually kind of play along with me. Uh, data table, I've got 24 pixel fonts, and that's what that is, a 24 pixel font. Uh, padding, five pixels all the way around, height 25, and blah, 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 blah. That's the end of my styles there, and you can kind of uh, footer style all the way down here at the very bottom. I want that to be kind of a light gray, and that's where that um, six A's comes from. That's the actual hex uh, definition. Uh, some container information, a bunch of other uh, style type stuff. End it with the uh, the appropriate tag, um, style tag. Then here comes the body, and I want the background of a certain cover, a uh, color. <laughs> And on load, I've got to call that. So whenever this page loads, it's going to go through some JavaScript to do a process type thing. That kicks off a process to go tell my uh, ESP32, send me some data. And that's where it's going to kick in the XML code. So if you go all the way down here to process at the very bottom here, just at the very bottom of my function, here's your process. And here is where I am going to put the keyword XML, and that is how my web page knows to refire that XML every time. Okay, so that's uh, that's kind of the main thing that you got to know there is on the body uh, um, tag is where I've got my process. I don't know where else you could put it, maybe other places. Then I've got the header, I've got um, my sensor monitor, date, time, and a bunch of other stuff. You can see that up on the web page here. Then I've got uh, my um, tables, how you can see the background color, I've got it alternating colors and pins and bits and volts and everything else. You can see how that is in my uh, my, my table uh, definition here. And uh, last but not least, there are some sensor controls down here. I've got a button type of button, uh, and its class is BTN, and uh, the class for the other button is BTN. Up in my style section, I've got a BTN, and it says make it this big with that font, with this background color, and these rounded edges, and everything else. Each button has its own on-click event. So when you click the button, it's going to run through some JavaScript called button press 0 for the 0 button and button press 1 for the 1 button. I have another control on here, as you can see, and that is a slider. Where is the range? It's, it's called a range. Why is the slider called a range? No idea, but it is what it is. That's the class. I've got a class up in my style section to make it a certain color and a certain width and all that jazz. The min is zero and the max is 255. This is where I'm getting my PWM signal from uh, zero to 255. I could have made it zero to 100% and just converted to the zero to 100% in my uh, ESP32 uh, code. And then uh, the value is starting value is zero and the width and all this other stuff. And on input, whenever you slide it, the slider around, there's a function in the JavaScript, which we'll see in a second here, and it's going to give you this and its value, and I'll go process all of that. Then you finish up with your foot, which I've got down here, and end body, and then we begin the JavaScript. And here's the, uh, here's the fun part. Um, you've got to have a, a few things that you, you have to have. If you're bringing XML code in, there's a global variable called XML HTTP, and there's the magic function that you're going to have to uh, know what that is. Somewhere this is written down, 
Um, but I just happen to rip it off of another website and here we go. Uh, there's a function to create the XML object and that's what this guy here is. So whenever we have create XML object, it's gonna run through all this and give me um, an object with the HTTP. Then here's my button press code. So whenever you press, press the button uh, just here, the LED, it's going to run through this code uh, right here and it's gonna get um, some X XML code it's going to get uh, a variable for the message. And if I want to do something like get um, a, an immediate feedback, like light was not turned on because I've measured it on my ESP, you uncomment this code and that's where it will tell you what that message coming back from your ESP is. No matter what, I've got to send button uh, under bar zero. Now I could call this cat, John, Larry, Steve, whatever I want. However, whatever you call it here, has got to be up in your, way up here, in your on event. So if you um, decide that you don't like the button under bar zero because it's not the way you code, that's fine. You can make it whatever you want. If Larry is here, then Larry's got to be here. This is the trigger that lets you know that, um, uh, that the on, is. Th this is actually the code going back to your website or your, um, your ESP from your website. And then you're going to have to send it. Same thing for button press one, uh, same exact code here, nothing new. Slider is a little bit different. Um, I've get, I get the value, I pass that in, uh, as you saw a second ago. And, but here I do want immediate feedback. As I move this uh, fan around, the slider around, I wanna get actual the, um, the, the, um, the code, or the, 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 the RPM from the, um, from the code. Now I know I just fudged this and just made my own math here, but here's where you could actually get instant feedback to what the variable uh, of your fan is. And you can have something like fan is not started be based on the RPM or who knows what. That's what this is going to do. It's going to allow you to get um, code immediately back from the web page. Everything else, I'm going through good old fashioned XML, which is updated um, very, very quickly. All right, so um, no matter what, uh, you still have to put uh, the slider value, and this is kind of goofy syntax here. I'm putting the update slider, and that's the keyword that I have in my web page right here. And the question mark is a delimiter, and lets you know that the next argument is value. So if I go back to my, my update, uh, where is it? Down, update slider. There's the argument value. Now, if you want to call this Larry or Steve or Cat, no problem. You just got to call it Larry, Steve, or Cat here and do the infamous concatenating the value uh, that you see just there. I forget what the true is. All right. Um, I know this is getting to be a long video here, but hopefully it's been very helpful for you. Response. Uh, here is the um, response coming back from... Um, your, uh, from, from the XML code, it's going to run through all of this stuff right here. I've got some variables for message, bar width, a few other things on here. Uh, get the XML stream coming in and start to process it. So what's going to happen here? The first one is I'm just getting um, date and time right from my machine here. Uh, actually, the smart um, device, your computer or your phone or whatever. And it's going to put that into a, an ID called time. And right up here, this guy here, his ID is called time. It's going to update it with the, uh, the uh, locale date string and the time string. Now, to get uh, all of the stuff out of your XML code, I've got to find that keyword called B0. And if you go back to your XML code, go all the way down here, wherever the XML code is, there's your B0 and the NB0. So it's going to find that B0. It's going to give you the first node value out of there, and it's going to put that into a message variable. Now, even though I'm passing it as a, a number uh, or a, a string, it's going to just magically convert it to whatever it needs to convert it to. It's the weird thing about the um, JavaScript here. It just does what it needs to do. Uh, if the message is below, above maybe 2048, maybe make the color red or make it green or whatever. Here's just a way that you can control Colors of things based on the input message. This is all optional. You don't have to do any of this thing here. The bar width, which I personally think is kind of cute. I'm looking at the message. I'm just putting some kind of a scale factor in there. So whenever I hit the, um, let's see if I can hit the, uh, the, the pins here, you can see how the bar is getting a little larger. That's what that 
um, style dot width property is setting for you and the bar width and a percent took me forever to realize what that syntax was to make it work. This is extremely weird code in, um, in, um, HTML program, but you know, it is what it is. If you want to control a color, uh, you can uncomment it here or leave it standard green as you see just up there. Same thing for the volts, same thing for the, uh, uh, the next um, bits for my uh, analog read. Um, and next thing for the uh, volts for the analog read. And the LED, whether it's on or off, uh, you can see how I'm actually just controlling uh, button zero. Go find the ID called button zero and change its um, text on the button to turn on or turn off. There's just, there's a million ways to do it. That's just the way I chose to do it. Same thing for the, um, I think the last one here is the switch. If I remember right, uh, switch, uh, turn it on or turn it off. Same general uh, principle there, but here I'm actually updating the text on the button, but I'm also updating a piece of text in the actual uh, table itself. All right, last couple things on here is, um, there's the function process. I think we've already talked about that. You may have to tickle this timeout right here. I've got it set to 100 because I've got very little data coming through. Um, I've got another web page that's, uh, I think I have to set that to 800 milliseconds because it's just so big. Uh, anyway, that that's kind of it. I hope this was uh, helpful. I know I went through a lot of detail here, and if you're still with me, kudos to you for putting up the pain of listening to me for, um, what are we at, about 40 minutes now? Uh, but hopefully this is enough uh, information to learn how to send data from your ESP32 to a web page and update just the uh, change data and get data from your uh, web page, like a button press or something, get that back into your ESP32 for processing, whether you're turning a fan on or turning off and giving instant feedback to uh, that, um, uh, that uh, process. Well, thanks for watching and uh, go create some cool web pages and have fun. Thanks for watching.